Johannes Eaton, 1888, 1967. So he died at 79 and he was born on, uh, on, uh, on, November, on November 11th. Johannes Eaton was a Swiss expressionist painter, designer, teacher, writer, and theorist associated with the Bauhaus uh, school. Together with German-American painter Lionel uh, Feininger and German sculptor Gerhard Marx under the direction of German architect Walter Gropius, Eaton was part of the core of the Weimar Bauhaus. That is, he was present at the Bauhaus at the very beginning in 1919. Uh, what is very interesting, although Bauhaus, you know, had at its, its, at its aim to prepare um, for architecture and architects, at the beginning, the only architect was Walter Gropius. And even him was, uh, you know, uh, I, I kind of unofficially an architect because he didn't, uh, he didn't have a diploma, uh, which was a good thing because then he 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 was free to 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 you know contribute to to uh, the modern revolution in a way, and um, so Johannes Eaton was different from the others somehow, but at the beginning, so again let's read again. It was Lionel or Lionel Feininger, Gerhard Marx, a sculptor. And uh, Walter Gropius uh, was, uh, you know, the, the founder of the school of the Bauhaus. But Eaton was, um, uh, Johannes Eaton uh, spent only two or three years at the Bauhaus. I think there was an increasing uh, tension between him and Gropius. Eaton was the mystic of the group in a way. And uh, he was very loved uh, by, by the students, but um, uh, the direction of the of, of, of Bauhaus changed somehow. Gradually, it moved away from uh, you know mysticism and expressionism, because the truth is, at the, at the beginning, the Bauhaus, in my opinion, had a, a mystical uh, um, element, to say the least. Because if you read the the, the Bauhaus manifesto, twice in a very short manifesto, the word heaven appears and the last word of the manifesto is faith. And so uh, there, there was also um, the, the, the call for um, exaltation. Walter Gropius in that manifesto uh, said that the only difference between a craftsman and an artist is that they are both craftsmen. They are both rooted in craft. But the only difference between craftsman and artist is that the artist is an exalted craftsman. Now, the very word exalted, you know, related to exaltation, uh, has an emotional, uh, uh, you know, uh, quality which, uh, you know, in time uh, became a little bit diminished, diluted because of the, uh, you know, the, the growth. Uh, in concern with, uh, you know, function, with uh, industrialization, with mass-produced objects, and so on. So what I'm trying to say, the beginning of the Bauhaus valued Johannes Eaton through Walter Gropius, because Eaton was the artist who um, had uh, this somehow a mystical attitude towards uh, not just uh, art, but also towards um, being in general. And you'll understand what I will talk about when I, when I continue. Uh, here he was. I mean, e even his posture, even this, this photograph shows clearly that this man was, um, you know, maybe, maybe too explicitly uh, concerned with uh, a certain level of, um, you know, spirituality, and uh, introversion, and uh, you'll understand uh, later on that uh, this man at the beginning was kind of in harmony with uh, the, the ideals of the Bauhaus as Walter Gropius envisioned them in 1919. I mean, look at him here. You know, this was a professor and a very admired professor by the students uh, at the Bauhaus. Now, uh, 
that, that side of the Bauhaus over the years, well, not too many years because the Bauhaus uh, was alive uh, in Europe for just uh, 13, 14 years. In the 14th year, the school um, dissolved and uh, went to the United States, to Chicago, uh, to Ulm. There was a, a kind of a new Bauhaus school, but the, the, the original Bauhaus school lasted for only a little less than 14 years. It, 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 uh, it, it uh, dissolved in 1933 and it started in 1919. So again, Johannes Eaton was important for the beginning of the, of the school. And um, I think that if we are to, and I know in Europe now there is a, a, a talk at the highest political level of bringing the spirit of the, of the, of the Bauhaus back to Europe, um, I think it is. it would be important to remember the beginnings of the Bauhaus. Because usually people, when they talk about the Bauhaus, they don't, don't, they don't even know about how the, how, how the Bauhaus was at the very beginning. Because the very few people read the manifesto by Walter Gropius and they don't know. They usually people associate the Bauhaus with, uh, you know, uh, kind of international style, attitude about aesthetics, the involvement with technology and so on, and the, and the, the emotionalism, if, we, if I am to use a problematic word, and the, the spirituality of the be, beginning, and even the mysticism of the beginning, uh, they are completely forgotten. He, uh, this is actually a book I had, but I don't have any longer, it was published in Austria, um, anyway, he was uh, teaching about color at the Bauhaus, and um, he was not the only one, of course. Uh, then it was Kandinsky and it was Paul Klee, very important artists, uh, more, more, uh, more acknowledged uh, perhaps than Johannes Eaton. It was a very interesting school because, because architecture was taught by non-architects. Well, Johannes Eaton didn't teach architecture per se, but somehow the school was meant to prepare towards that um, sublime conjunction of efforts from the painter, the sculptor, and the architect for building the building of the future. But building the building of the future at the very beginning was to happen in educational terms without the presence of architects, actually. Uh, then uh, some architects showed up, but uh, it, it took a while. Anyway, this, this was Johannes Eaton, and he's important to be, to be remembered because I think he symbolized a part of Bauhaus, of the Bauhaus, which I think deserves to be known. Uh, there were other painters there. You know, this school was almost run by painters, with the exception of Walter Gropius. But um, uh, he, was, uh, he was special because he had this, uh, um, you know, uh, for me still kind of uh, enigmatic um, relationship with what we call spirit. And um, I, I still think somehow his position deserved in a certain way, some kind of, uh, I don't know. I am. A, I am. I'm on the point of of of, of launching on a, on a dangerous path here, but I I know his work, you know, to a certain extent, and uh, I think I think he probably entered into some kind of a conflict with uh, with Walter Gropius. It's also possible he was kind of a difficult man. I I, I don't know. The students loved him, but I'm not sure. I mean, look, look at this painting or this one, and then look at this one. This is also by Johannes Sitten, but they seem to be made by different people. I mean, yes, here we see a fragment or a, a, you know, uh, something very connected with what we saw earlier, but what is this? This is a strange painting. What does it represent? He also has an engraving or a drawing and you are going to see the house of the white man which I, I have difficulties to understand. 
there is some kind of a fragment of a house here too. This uh, you know kind of strange corner, you know, with this uh, kind of useless column here. Um, considering that it's not a cantilever, uh, you know, that is uh, requires really a, a column. So obviously he was not an architect. But what would this painting represent? You know, it's 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 something mysterious about this painting. You know, and the posture of this, is this a child? Maybe, but maybe it's, I don't know, what's the age of this um, human being here? And what is the meaning, the symbolism of the cube in his hand? Uh, it, there are some symbols here that I do not know what they represent, but I have a feeling he, he wanted to, to symbolize something. Anyway. Johannes Eaton and the Mazda's nun at the Bauhaus. What is the Mazda's nun? Mazda's nun was a spiritualist movement. It's possible was connected with, with Iran. Uh, and he brought it to the Bauhaus. They had some very strict uh, uh, rules, you know, to eat uh, in a certain way, maybe only vegetables to um, uh, perform. They had uh, Mazda's nun. Mazda's nun uh, ceremonies, uh, a very interesting thing and, and having to do again with spirituality, with spirit understood in a certain way. Anyway, in older age, he became, uh, you know, he does look like a professor. In the book I had, I even saw him with, uh, you know, slippers in his house, very domestic and so on. Now the house of the white man, this is this is uh, this is what he, his imagination produced, and I I always ask myself what did he want to say with this with, with this you know building? Let's call it a building. Did he want to be sarcastic towards what the white man or the white being might represent? Because it's essentially you have two cubes, one above the other. You know, very simplistic. I mean, yes, he played a little bit with uh, the openings, but uh, essentially it's a simplistic, uh, you know, architecture, if we are to call it so. What did he want to say? Did he want to criticize the, the human, the, 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 the white man? Or, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, a mystic milieu. I, I, I talked already about the mysticism of the beginning of the Bauhaus. And now we'll see some images. You see, this is from a Mazda's nun celebration. Uh, and he was involved in, in this and the students loved these things, I guess. Uh, and um, again, the, this part of the Bauhaus should be know, known and should be explored. It had to do with well-being. Yes, with, uh, you know, uh, breathing in a certain way, uh, breathing, breathing exercises. Um, it was an attempt to bring to the school some kind of organizing principles for a, for a, a holistic kind of life. Then, you know, he, his studies of color were important and, uh, you know, you can find a lot of information on, on the web about this. So, you know, to summarize, Johannes Eaton, who was born on November 11th, was one of the first professors at the Bauhaus. He didn't spend too, too much time. He left after two or three years, uh, but he was important. And uh, it's possible that if he remained in the school, the school might have evolved a little bit differently. Who knows? 